Welcome back everyone. In this video, we're going to discuss equity finance, which will then conclude all the long-term sources of finance that a business had at its disposal when it's looking for finance for a longer time period. And we've already discussed two which fall under debt finance called debentures and long-term bank loan. The third option here called equity finance it's quite different from those two. And how it's different is that within though the other two debenture and long-term loans, you are eventually going to repay the money back that you've taken and you're going to have some sort of debt or liability on your books while that finance is still with you. Equity finance sells parts of company to interested investors instead. Okay, what is it? It's a permanent source of finance raised by companies through sale of shares of investors. And what these shares are, are basically portions of a company that owners are willing to sell for a little bit of finance. Now, what type of companies can sell shares? Now, public and private can both sell shares. The difference is that the public and between public and private is that private ones would like to keep the control within the company's own owners and therefore they want to sell it to just their friends and family people who they can trust so it's a very close-knit system within a private limited company when you look at a public limited company that's where you're looking to raise large sums of capital in one go where you get to sell your shares on a stock exchange so in one go, you can sell millions and millions of worth of shares and uh, anyone from the general public can uh, sign up and buy any number of shares that you're willing to sell. So both companies have the option of selling shares. The difference is who they're selling to. But before they even start selling it, they have to make one thing very clear about this whole process. And that whole concept is called authorized share capital. Okay. authorized share capital now this is the maximum amount that you're looking to raise through the sale of shares maximum amount of capital company intends to raise through sale of shares to investors so everybody should be fully aware of what is the extent to which this raising of capital is going to go through the stock exchange if the business wants to exceed this amount they will have to rewrite this amount in their official documents then submit it for approval and then they can sell more shares but until that happens they have to clearly identify in the documents what amount they expect to raise through their offering so let's say for example they need to raise 10 million dollars and they decide that they're going to raise, sell it with 10 million shares that means each share is going to be worth a dollar it could have been any numerical combination, but just simply stating the fact that authorized share capital tells you the amount that you intend to raise. And then according to that, you will decide the number of shares that you want to sell on the stock exchange. So both types, private or public, can do it. It's a part, it's like by selling a part of the company in return, you're getting finance for it. So when it comes to raising or listing your shares on the stock exchange, there are two ways to do this. So basically, there are two ways to sell shares to general public. And the first of those is simply known as a public issue. And this is where when a company decides that we want to raise $10 million and we're going to make our documents and we're going to state our authorized share capital, the initial offering of shares is what you call a public issue. And in this situation, the company is first supposed to, to prepare the documents. Now, these are very technical, lengthy documents. These are prospectus, there's a trustee, there are offering documents, a lot of proper documentation that's required before you can be authorized to sell shares on the stock exchange. And this takes a lot of time and money for the company to prepare. So it's a tedious process, but one that will yield a big reward in terms of the final that you get at the end of it. Now, once the documents are required, <coughs> excuse me, they are sent in for approvals to the government authorities. And once they approve it, only after that can you start advertising sale of shares to the general public. Now, this is done through a couple of means, and this process is known as book building. 
And this is where you first try to offer it to people with high net worth or companies who are looking to spend large amounts on buying these shares. So you want to get rid of bigger chunks quicker and then what's left over then you tend to try to sell it on the stock chain to individual investors or anyone else who wants to buy it. So there's not much restriction uh, uh, on who can or who cannot buy these shares as long as they meet the basic criteria anyone is eligible to buy these shares through the stock exchange. Now as I suggested earlier uh, these documents are time consuming and are expensive to prepare. That's because you require lawyers, you require bankers, you require your own company experts to spend months before you can make this public offering. So that's one way to sell shares through a public issue. Another way to do it is through what we call a rights issue. And this is like a thank you to existing shareholders. Why would you want to thank your existing shareholders? Because they have trusted you with their money. They had uh, invested it and not asked for too much return. And if that's the situation as a company, you want to reward them. And when you want to sell more shares, you offer a rights issue. This is where existing shareholders are given the right to buy more shares, but at a discounted rate. So existing shareholders can buy at a cheaper rate this way. It's a thank you and also another way for the company to bring in capital quickly because these existing shareholders won't have to be convinced again. They've already convinced, they were invested. Now when you want, when you want more money, they'd be more than happy to give it to you as long as you've proved yourself to be a profit-making organization. So it increases the supply of shares. That's obvious to understand. And we know that whenever supply of something goes up, the price of it is bound to go down. So that's something that you have to look at before deciding if you want to offer a rights issue or not. But again, just to sum up two ways through which you can raise finance through paths you can take to sell shares and in turn raise finance for the company. So let's look at some of the advantages and disadvantages to a business of using equity finance to raise capital. And the biggest advantage you get out of it is that it is a permanent source, which means there is no repayment required. Unlike a bank loan or debentures, which eventually had to be paid back, these don't have to be. Of course, unless you are seizing trading and you want to close up, you have to close shop and then you have to do that. But otherwise, this situation does not occur. So you don't have to worry about saving up to pay these back. Secondly, you can raise large sums of capital in one go. There is no restriction. You can raise billions of dollars on the stock exchange offering in one go. So it's one quick fix for your, all your long term finance needs. And finally, dividends are only paid if profit is made. Uh, I understand that you might want to question here the difference between preference shares and ordinary shares. And I understand that some preference shares are always given a dividend, but in majority of situations where there's ordinary shares, dividend is only paid when profit is made. If there's no profit, there's no dividend to be paid out. So in some ways, it's an added protection for the company that it only has to be paid out when you have a positive in your account, not a negative. So that works out quite well for them. In terms of its disadvantages, the biggest one, of course, is when you start selling shares to new people, they are also given decision-making power. At the end of each year, public limited companies, for example, are supposed to hold an annual general meeting, simply known as AGM, where all the shareholders are going to vote on who the board of directors is going to be, who is going to be running the company, and what the direction is that the company should be taking. And every new shareholder with new uh, with new ownership would want to have their own say in the company. So with more shares being sold, control and decision making is being shared with new shareholders. And if if they don't well well if they don't mean well for the company, then it's not going to go well for you either. And finally, share prices go up and down on a weekly, on a daily, on a minute by minute basis sometimes, and that's beyond the control of the company. So. That's something that you just have to put up when that sometimes the company's value is going to go up, it's going to go down. But as long as you perform well, people will continue to invest, people will continue to demand your shares, and that will take your stock up rather than bringing it down. So that is equity finance.